Bro, bro, it's going to be crazy. If they get Shohei, what are they going to give up, though, to get Shohei? You know, that's going to be the uh, – actually, they let go of a lot of a lot of people off season, So, they have – I think they have the cap to actually make it happen. So, you figure there he is. Out. What's up, what's dude? What's up? What's up? How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing good, dude. I just looked at the yeah. calendar, but we're, I think, 59 days away from – 59? 59. Hey, not even a not even a six in front of it anymore, huh? No, I'm pretty sure it's 59 days away, bro. So uh, it's that time. What's up, Mike? Yeah, it's crazy how time is flying. I remember when we first booked this event, we're like, oh, cool. We got we got six months. Man, when you run these shows and, and the type of uh, the amount of stuff that we try to put in on everything, it's uh, the time just flies so fast. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, compared to, like, we talk about it all the time, compared to the beginning, and we're 60 days out just thinking of the concept of a show. Uh, we've come a long way, for sure. So. I mean, 59. <laughs> Back here, 59 days away. <clears throat> it's great. Yeah. But yesterday was a good day for us, though. 12 tables sold? Yeah. Come on, let's go. 12 tables yeah, sold. Yeah. Yeah. 12 tables sold yesterday, which... It, you know, it's making so there's going to be that sense of urgency always in this industry, I think. People want to hold on to their money and obviously use it for, uh, you know, whether it be deals or just hold on to it uh, until, you know, the time is right or whatever deals are made, just trying to pick up the PC. Uh, but we got a lot of tables sold, a lot of traction. So it means that what we're doing on the marketing end is working. Um, and then also, you know, making these phone calls, doing the little things that you and I talk about all the time, yeah. um, taking that extra step and, and really, you know, being on speed. For, for everyone in the union marketplace, not just uh, sponsors or vendors, literally everybody. <laughs> oh, I know. I mean, it's it's crazy. Fast things are like I was already saying. Wow, what's up, DQ guy? Um, but you know, it's just again, we sell twelve tables yesterday. We're just under. I think we're about eighty percent filled right now. Um, so we're. I think we only have like thirty tables for sure. Yeah. Uh, available. If you guys haven't already. Uh, make sure that you guys check out the site, pick out your, your tables, because this thing is selling out in the next couple weeks. At least that's the pace right now. Uh, yeah. I'm not trying to scare you guys into buying tables. No, but no. Uh, There will be a wait list 100% yeah, for this show. Definitely yeah. going to have a wait on this one. Um, again, we for our, our biggest thing was we wanted to make sure we kept on innovating. And there's a lot of live, you know, things that are happening live right now on our website. And if you guys haven't visited the website in a while, uh, make sure you guys check it out. Uh, every single day, there's something brand new uh, being implemented. And really, it's just to make the vendor and uh, experience of our audience uh, even more enjoyable. So a lot of things happening right now on the website. If you are a vendor and you're hearing this, update your profile. Trust me, because it's going to just benefit you in the, uh, the long run there. Uh, you're going to start seeing a lot of things happen uh, within our website alone. Um, things are going to start going. We're going to keep saying it. I mean, there's going to be a new live feature every single day uh, on our website that's just going to enhance the experience for our vendors and our audience. So um, if you haven't yet, update your profile, all vendors out there. If you haven't booked your table yet, make sure you do because we're less than 30 tables away from being sold out. Uh, we don't want you guys to miss out on this uh, epic event that's happening in California. Uh, man, we're just all on fire, man, which is uh, I'm, I'm excited for. 59 days away. This is usually when you and I start to panic a little bit. Um, but I feel really good. I feel really good. Yeah, no, I feel really, really good. Yes, check I got the blocks. Most in. Right. blocks, for sure. So this has been the most calculated that we've been. And it's really uh, cool to see. Just like, like, six days out of a show a year ago now. So <laughs> I'm really excited for Pajama. Oh, dude, I know. Um, you know, today's going to be me asking you some questions now. Last week, you got to ask me some questions, and I'm actually excited for that. Uh, you know, the cool thing is that you were on YouTube. Dude, the last video that we posted of you, the behind the scenes. Uh, if anyone here is looking to host their own show, and I think I say this almost every show, but you truly, Alex and I are an open book. Uh, if, the, if you guys decide on you wanted to open up your own little local show or even a big one, whatever it may be, uh, we want to share our journey with you so that we can, guys can kind of learn. And you could really feel that and tell that 
in our last YouTube video that you were on. It's a 20 minute, 15 or 20 minute video, but it really shows everything that, you know, emotionally you could tell it in your face uh, as far as for, you know, the calm before the storm, it's never calm. Um, and there's always an audible we have to pull almost every single yeah. event. And it's kind of fun to let people in on that. So, uh, I mean, talk about how this Saturday went. Like, what was your experience uh, with, with Wild Girl? Yeah, so, I mean, the thing I really like about these satellite shows, and I, I say it all the time, is that we're getting new vendors. We're getting people interested in becoming vendors. We're getting repeat newer on the newer side uh, of people becoming vendors. So I think it was uh, one of the vendors' first shows, one of the other vendors' second shows, and then I was speaking to one of uh, the parents about having their son getting into entrepreneurship um, and really exploring that side of cards and, you know, to, to have that platform at the, our, our satellite shows is just really cool to see, um, you know, and it comes with a big responsibility too. This is going to be these people's first experience with a card show. Um, so creating that family atmosphere, which is something that we, you know, I take a lot of pride in. I know you do too. Yeah. Um, it's going to be something that we continue to drive home and make it comfortable for everyone. Like, you know, everyone should feel like, they are welcome and everyone if they're interested in doing like doing something like this they should feel comfortable enough uh, with our guidance to, to really try it out and and see what it's all about in its entirety so um the show went really well uh steady crowd that we're getting i think the consistency of that show uh is really starting to pay dividends um it's on that second saturday of every month so being at that having that be one of our home bases obviously it's just going to continue to compound and get more and more people so it was a good show. Um, there were some really good numbers from some of our vendors. And again, it's just, it's a, I love how hands-on it is. It's yeah. just, I, I take a lot of pride in it. I'm able to, to you know, at Del Mar shows, you get overwhelmed. And, and, you know, we're trying to be, you know, everywhere at the same time. It's just, it's just not possible. But at these satellite shows, people can really get a feel for who we are, which I think is important if they're going to be doing business at the Union Marketplace, know who we are. And then we can answer any questions and take that extra time um, to make sure these people are welcome and everything's going well on their end from the vendor side. Yeah, oh, dude, that's you nailed it right there. I mean, exactly. These local shows are so important. And I'm not just talking about our local show. If you guys are in a different city and there's a local show there, um, try it out because it's really just the – it's the it's a trial run. You know, it's not as dating as these bigger shows like our, you know, Burbank or these other shows that have three or 400 tickets. I mean, dude, it's uh, – it's to be in that kind of setting so for us to be able to provide a space that has 10 12 maybe 14 tables um a lot more intimate i think is important for the hobby so that way it gets them into uh that entrepreneurial you know my so how old is this kid that you're talking about uh he is 14 years old um and he's just really into cards and i think you know he would he, he's come to all of our shows you know looking to pick up and he's a collector but now he wants to go on the other side of things and see kind of what that would be. And I think his parents are really excited for him to start getting into business and having that, like we, like we say, entrepreneurship mentality. So when I see things like that, I just, I love it. I know we're onto something good um, and, and it's just creating opportunity and really building the hobby. The more new vendors that we get, I mean, we can't, we can't emphasize it enough. The more new people that we get in this industry, the bigger it is for everybody. So, I mean, that's not just for the union marketplace. That's for these other big shows. That's for these LCSs. It's just for the overall sentiment of the industry. Um, and, and, you know, just introducing people to the culture. So I, 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 that's what I love the most about our satellite shows and just the union marketplace in general. I think that's like what we really emphasize on is like regardless if, they, if someone joins our, our national show or, or a local show, uh, they're – we're always going to put experience um, first, you know, and making sure that they're successful. We always talk about, it. you know, and I think the reason why this is happening for a local show is really the community boost that we try to implement on all of our shows. Um, and if you can, just explain the what the opportunity boost is to someone that's never been to our events. Yeah, so, I mean, the opportunity boost really more or less is controlling supply and demand, right? Like, so making sure we're, we are getting more and more people to each of those allied shows and then also controlling the amount of tables. So 
if we only have 10 vendors at these satellite shows or 12 vendors, whatever that, you know, sweet spot is, it just sets everybody up for success and makes them more encouraged and motivated to get back to become a vendor and really just get continue on in, in the hobby. And, and sometimes it's not always about, you know, making a ton of money. Like sometimes it's about the relationship building. We talk about that all the time. Sometimes, you know, it's just about the community that, that we built. Like sometimes it's fun to go to a card show and hang with the boys, you know, and girls, whoever. Uh, but, you know, continue to compound that, what we've created and, and make it better. You know? Yeah, I think that that was honestly like the best gesture on last Saturday, which I'm extremely sad that I missed. Um, was that Leo wanted to spend his birthday weekend, you know, yes, at, yeah. at our card show. I'm like, right, yeah, right. Weeks before he goes, is it cool if I had to spend my birthday there? But like, of course, yeah. we love having you here. That's exactly, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking about when I was saying that too, picturing Leo <laughs> and then you and I obviously, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. spending our birthdays at the show. Yeah. And, uh, EJ uh, spent it's, it's, uh, and you know we've had some pretty pretty great times over there at the Escondido. Uh, we used to be at the Escondido event. So. I it was it. like a party, I, a party every Saturday. That's one that I missed that I'd love to go back to. I mean, hopefully we can make the finances work yeah. and find a way to get me. You know, guys, these shows are not cheap. <laughs> so wow. that's a thing that takes a lot of um, effort and making sure that we're doing things the right way so that way we can execute and still develop a – a perfect experience as close to perfect experience for you guys without having to break the bank right um or go bankrupt so uh man it's it's a it's a crazy game that we play but i want to hear more about you know we've been doing this for two and a half years now and yeah would have you done this again knowing kind of <laughs> you, would i would i do it you, again you knew <laughs> that this could grow something that we're growing now um and you knew that in 2001, when we said, let's do this, like, would you say yes or would, what, what would you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would. I, you know, I, I think any entrepreneurial journey that you take, you're, you're just going to, you're going to have to learn how to get smacked in the mouth. You're going to have to learn to kind of stay even keel. Like we talk about it all the time. You know, I think in the beginning, our highs were highs and our, and our lows were pretty lows, you know, and I'm still it's such a different industry. It's, it's, it's forever moving. It's changing. It's never just a static place that you're in, in this industry. Um, so I, I would 100% do it again. I would definitely be a lot more, definitely be a lot more calculated in some of the things that we probably did. But, um, you know, I have, I have things that I, I'll be able to take with me forever, not just in business, but but really in life, and, and I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but that's really the truth. There's, you know, you you own a lot of businesses, so you know, like, with the way you manage certain things in your life is like an overflow to other things. So, yeah, 100%, I, I would um, do it again, for sure. Yeah, I think I said the same thing. You asked me the same thing last week, so mm -hmm. I wanted to make it be the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, I'm glad neither one of our answers was no. That's a good thing. <laughs> no, I, I, um, ask me tomorrow, though. <laughs> no. Yeah, right. Exactly. But you're uh, right. It, ebbs and flows. We've learned so much. And just through Union Marketplace, it's uh, really shown me how to um, understand just like how important building a community is. And I think that's what you and I always talk about. Every time you and I meet and we have something to discuss, it's always about the community of how it's building is sometimes logistics and little things like that, but it's really more about the connections that we're able to, to make during the events and during the shows and during the process really. So uh, that's one thing that I really enjoy about this entire thing. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. Well, uh, team wise, man, like how's that going for you? How's the conversations going? I think I kind of asked this last week, but you know, give a little update on street team. How's that going? Uh, you said street team. Yep. Uh, yeah. So street team is going really well. Um, you know, obviously, I've been getting out in the community, a lot of different businesses, and uh, really just just chopping it up with them. I, like, it's it's not always as – you never know what you're going to expect walking into some of these places. So it's it's something new. It's like a, going on a little journey every day, and you never know really what to expect. Some people are really receptive. Yeah. Some people, like, um, you know – are very like they respect the hustle they just respect it. they don't even care what it's about like, yeah yeah no, for sure do it 
Uh, and then other people, you know, they're just confused, like, what is this? Which gives me a perfect opportunity to start talking about what it is, not only what we're doing, like I say all the time, but, but the industry, cards, um, uh, just the nostalgia of collecting in general. There's always, I feel like everybody at some, some point in their life is, is come across collecting something, you know. So I think everybody has a familiarity with it. Not everybody understands it, but it leaves me that opportunity to kind of talk about it. Um, but the next big push for, for the street team to answer your question is going to be uh, really getting on board with the youth sports programs in the Temecula area, which is going to be a task. It's a lot harder than you, than you would think. I know you know how hard it is, but it's not as easy as just rolling up and being like, hey, there's nothing that we want from you. We literally just want to give you and your uh, program this experience on behalf of the hobby. So uh, figuring out how to maneuver that still, I will say, because uh, it, it's unique. You're not selling anything. You're, you're just literally trying to build a relationship uh, and getting people to, you know, have that interest in the hobby, come to the show. And then also just, you know, Pete, like if somebody's not into that, get, give them an introduction. Yeah. You know, I feel like we're constantly introducing people, whether it be vendors, whether it be kids, whether it be parents coming back into the hobby. We're kind of like that that introduction face, you know, back into it. And that's so, um, so important to think a lot, of, a lot of times we always, well, a lot of businesses in general, they focus so much on media presence and uh, bringing in people digitally. And uh, that part, what you're doing there with the street team is something that's so forgotten but it's also the most effective. Uh, you got to think, right? right? Like Southern California has almost 10 million people from LA County down to San Diego County and IE, right? Mm -hmm. And within those three counties, of course, within those four counties, dude, we have over 10 million people. That's more than enough to get manga, right? right? And it's, uh, yeah, so it, the street team concept is so important. And I really want to that home for anyone that's, just establishing any business, whether if you're doing a card show or a barbershop like what I have or any anything else or some sort of retail business, a street team out and be delivered and your business is so successful uh, in a short amount of time because you're actually getting um, real legitimate handshakes, people that will actually want to join your yeah. community that you're building. So I like that's, I see you every single day out there. I see all you know, I see all the pictures that you're taking, like oh, put up 14 flyers today or uh, posters today, put up 20 mm -hmm. posters today. Uh, I'm down to Diego, like all that stuff, bro. It's, it's, it pays, it's going to pay off. And uh, I can, for everyone in that potential, yeah. when I go through, all the put into that. Yeah. And it, I, in, to kind of go circle back to, to the question, would you do it again? It, you know, another thing, this whole, street team and, and the union marketplace in general it really teaches you um, delayed gratification <laughs> you know yeah. it's like working out it's like you go bust your ass at the gym for 10 hours today but guess what you will not have a six pack yeah. <laughs> you will not be jacked it, it takes time to do these things and uh, you know we really saw i think for the first time at del mar three mm -hmm. the you know mm -hmm. the, the, how these things work and sometimes it's really hard to figure out how, where, what is working, you know, what, what is causing, you know, in, in this area or this demographic people are, are these, you know, with the ticket redemption, that's another way that we kind of dialed it in a little bit, but figuring out what works. And, and then once you figure that out, you know, rinse and repeat it. So. Keep it going. No, uh, I guess, man, we, we went over 20 minutes. I know we try to usually keep it under 20 minutes, but um, a little answers and you already know i know we we talk about this all the time um i work hard for you you know and i know you do the same thing for me mm -hmm. so if you guys do end up like opening up your own business or doing anything mm -hmm. really in in this entrepreneurial uh, world and you end up partnering someone with someone make sure that you're willing to work for them yeah. um you it's know and not just point. so it's a great 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 there's days <laughs> i will say there's days that you, you can do more. And if you know your partner that you have that, that respect for is out there doing more, I think it pushes you. And I think so many great business people, you'll hear them say like your team is the most important part. So 
mm-hmm. be willing to go to war because that's really what it is, you yeah. know, yeah. and have that baby uh, with someone that you're, you're willing to go to war with. So exactly yep you got to do it for if you can't do it for yourself make sure you can do it for your partner yep. so i do it every single day for you my um Bye you know tomorrow. man uh, uh lastly lakers taking game one or what mm, are you asking the fan in me or are you asking the basketball analytical person hey, let me just ask the basketball like the analytical? basketball okay well let me give you it's not going to just be a simple answer here's my answer i think that hey, the we're, nuggets... we're... I'm Alex. I think that the, I, I right. think that the Nuggets are a matchup nightmare. I think they have so many different weapons. They're very big. They, defensively, they they can. I think Gordon, you can pretty much put him on anybody. Uh, Jokic is obviously going to go out there and do his thing. And I think the deciding factor on whether we're able to really handle this team is how well we can contain Murray. You know, because he, he can just kill you. Yeah, you know, but I yeah. like our. Bench. I will say I like our bets. I like the depth that we have, and it's gonna be a good. It's gonna be a good series. But uh, the Nuggets are a pretty good team. I will, and I've been saying that since about midway through the season. I know I've been a believer in the Nuggets for sure. Uh, I think uh, AD is gonna be exhausted. Yeah. For I think my I guess the the simplest way I could put it is like. Um, a guard grading or a guarding Steph Curry and how exhausted they are, it'd be the same type of exhaustion from a center trying to or a power forward trying to guard uh, Jokic the entire game. And it's just footwork, the amount of pump fakes that he puts up. And imagine having to jump three times before you even him shoot. <laughs> That's exhausting work, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. always have to have your head on the swivel because he could easily pass the ball. For this sure. guy's amazing. Uh, you know, Curry's starting to heat up. Um, I really, I just don't know who's gonna who's gonna show out right now for the Lakers. The game, you know, series one against the Grizzlies, it was, it was Ruby Hachimura, right? He so he went came out and first started playing twenty or twenty five to thirty minutes every single game, averaging around seventeen, eighteen points a game. Yeah. That's huge. And then mm-hmm. he got shut down uh, for against the Warriors, and it was Vanderbilt who shut down uh, uh, Curry, and then you had Austin Reeves just do his thing was second leading score the entire time. So I'm like, who's it going to be? You think it's Austin Reeves, CNC? I think so. I hope so. Oh, I think so. One cool thing that I saw before I leave here. What's up, Bayview? Uh, before I leave, uh, or before we leave here, at the show, um, it was actually with Donald, um, card show located. It was at his uh, his booth there. Someone had an entire display case of Austin Reeves. I'm like, that's pretty damn awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. This like, past weekend? Huh? This past, past weekend? This past Saturday. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, we're where, so, to... I, I, where, where, his, where are his cars at, range-wise, price range-wise? I don't even know. I mean, they were talking about his silver his silver Prism PSA 10 selling for, like, 800 bucks. I'm like, man, that's pretty dope. So I'm like, all right, cool. I mean, Good for him. <laughs> I honestly love that dude's game. I really, really do. It's not often that he'll make a wrong decision. Yeah, definitely fun. Uh, lastly, White Labs in two weeks. Uh, we also, I think there's a, another show in Vegas that we're going to try to make an appearance out of two. Uh, Divide and Conquer, right? Yep. Me, EJ, going around everywhere, making sure that, um, you know, the union marketplace, that we're doing our own part in terms of street team, getting this community bigger, bigger introducing it to people that don't know anything about sports cards and getting them sucked into this amazing community, right? So yeah. let's get it again, man. Um, I'm sure it. we're talking today, but let's make it happen. Cool? Let's do it. Yep. Peace, everybody. Let's go, Lakers. Go. Austin yeah. Reed. Go, Laker. Let's go. Austin Reed. <laughs> Appreciate you, guys. Appreciate yeah. you. See you.